Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and in this lesson we're going to talk about rotational kinetic energy. Our objectives include calculating the kinetic energy of a rotating object, and we'll do that by starting to talk about types of kinetic energy. Objects traveling with a translational velocity have energy of motion known as translational kinetic energy, and we've been talking about that for a while, where the translational kinetic energy is one-half mass times the velocity squared. Objects traveling with angular or rotational kinetic energy also have energy of motion, energy due to that rotation. So they have rotational kinetic energy, which is equal to one-half I omega squared. One-half the rotational inertia, the moment of inertia, times the square of the angular velocity. And again, notice the parallels, one-half, one-half. Mass compared to rotational inertia. Uh, linear inertia, rotational inertia. Linear speed squared, angular speed squared. So, let's see how this works. If we talk about how we compare all of these translational values and equations to rotational, we find an analog for all of them. Displacement, s equals r theta, or we could find angular displacement, that's going to be linear displacement divided by the radius. Or velocity equals r omega, omega equals v over r. Acceleration equals r alpha, angular acceleration, or angular acceleration equals linear acceleration over r. Time is the same in both worlds. Torque, Newton's second law, net force equals mass times acceleration. Net torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Linear momentum, P equals mv. Angular momentum, L equals I omega. And finally, kinetic energy, translational kinetic energy, one half mv squared. Rotational kinetic energy, one half I omega squared. You have analogs to all of these different values in the rotational and translational arenas. So let's see how we can apply this. We have a 0.62 kilogram basketball flying through the air with a velocity of eight meters per second. What is its translational kinetic energy? Well, the translational kinetic energy we know is one half mv squared, which will be one half times its mass, 0.62 kilograms, times the square of its speed, eight meters per second squared, for a total of about 19.84 joules. The same basketball also spins about its axis with an angular velocity of 5 radians per second. Determine its moment of inertia and its rotational kinetic energy. Well, to find its moment of inertia, I'm going to approximate it as a hollow sphere. And I could either derive that if I have some calculus background, or if not, chances are you probably just want to look this one up. The moment of inertia for a hollow sphere is two-thirds its mass times the square of its radius. So that'll be two-thirds times its mass, 0.62 kilograms, times the square of its radius, 0.38 meters, or about 0.0597 kilogram meters squared. So then to find its rotational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy is one-half I omega squared, which is going to be one half times, we just found its moment of inertia, 0 0.0597 times its angular velocity, five radians per second squared, which gives us a rotational kinetic energy of about 0 0.75 joules. So what's its total kinetic energy going to be? Well, to do that, all we have to do is add these together. The total kinetic energy is the translational kinetic energy plus the rotational kinetic energy, which is going to be 19.84 joules plus about 0 0.75 joules for a total of right around 20.6 joules if I round that off. So a way we can apply our new understanding of rotational kinetic energy. Let's take a look at an ice skater problem. An ice skater spins with a specific angular velocity. She brings her arms and legs closer to her body, reducing her moment of inertia to half its original value. What happens to her angular velocity and what happens to her rotational kinetic energy? Well, we have to remember as the skater pulls arms and legs in, the moment of inertia I is going to go down. Now, 
angular momentum has to remain constant because we don't have any net external torques on the system. So if angular momentum has to remain the same, and L equals I omega, what's going to happen is as she pulls her arms and legs in, I is going to get a lot smaller. L remains the same, so we have this little moment of inertia. That means our angular velocity must get really big. If this gets cut in half, this must get doubled. Okay. Now to figure out what happens to a rotational kinetic energy, remember that rotational kinetic energy is one half I omega squared. I got cut in half and omega was doubled. But omega is also squared, so we have a 4x increase due to this and 50% due to that gives us a total change of a doubling of the rotational kinetic energy. So we doubled the rotational kinetic energy as the skater pulled arms and legs in. How did that happen? Well, the skater must have done work to bring arms and legs in. That work, that extra energy, is now rotational kinetic energy as the skater spins at a higher angular velocity. Let's take a look at another one here. Gina rolls a bowling ball of mass 7 kilograms and radius 10.9 centimeters down a lane with a velocity of 6 meters per second. Find the rotational kinetic energy of the bowling ball, assuming it does not slip. What's its total kinetic energy? Well, to begin with, I'm going to approximate the bowling ball as a solid sphere to find its moment of inertia, or its rotational inertia. We're the moment of inertia of a solid sphere is equal to two-fifths mr squared. You can derive it if you're going to use calculus, or if you don't have the calculus down, feel free to go look that one up. So that'll be two-fifths times its mass, 7 kilograms, times the square of its radius, 0 0.109 meters squared, or about 0 0.033 kilogram meters squared. Now let's find its angular velocity as it rolls down that lane. Omega must equal V over R, which is 6 meters per second, divided by its radius, 0 0.109 meters, which means it has an angular velocity of about 55 radians per second. Well, now let's find its rotational kinetic energy. Kinetic energy rotational is 1 half I omega squared, which will be 1 half times 0 0.033 kilogram meters squared. We found the moment of inertia already. Times the square of its angular velocity, 55 radians per second squared, for a total rotational kinetic energy of about 50 joules. And now let's find its total kinetic energy. That's going to be its translational kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, plus its rotational kinetic energy, which we already determined 1 half i omega squared was 50 joules. So that's going to be 1 half times its mass, 7 kilograms, times the square of its velocity, 6 meters per second, plus 50 joules to give us a total of about 176 joules. All right, hopefully that gets you a good introduction to rotational kinetic energy. If you need more help or looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks everyone. Make it a great day.